This LOS is contrast weak form, semi-strong form, and strong form market efficiency. Forms of the efficient market hypothesis. Eugene Fama developed a framework for describing the degree to which markets are efficient. In his efficient market hypothesis, markets are efficient when prices reflect all relevant information at any point in time. This means that the market prices observed for securities, for example, reflect the information available at the time. In his framework, Fama defines three forms of efficiency, weak, semi-strong, and strong. Each form is defined with respect to the available information that is reflected in prices. So here we have a little table, and we can see on the uh, rows we have the forms of market efficiency. One is the weak form and uh, market efficiency. Two is the semi-strong form of market efficiency, and three is the strong form. And then the market prices reflect here on the columns past market data, public information, and private information. So we can see the weak form of market efficiency, market prices reflect past market data, and the semi-strong market prices reflect past market data and public information, and then finally the strong form of market efficiency, market prices reflect past market data, public information, and private information. Now note, this is academic, okay? This is a theory or a hypothesis. And uh, so for example, the strong form of market efficiency, you can see that uh, market prices um, uh, um, reflect private information. Well, that can't be, the strong form of market efficiency can't be proved because how do we, how do we know, how do we have access to private information, okay? So in the past, this is a table. Another way to think about it, in the old days, they used to always use a graphic which was a, uh, a, a set of circles, and in the middle you had the weak form uh, because that's the past market data. You can see it's surrounded by the semi-strong because it includes not only the past but also the public, and then finally on the outside you would have the uh, strong form because it includes not only the past market data but the public information and then finally the private information, okay? So you can see that's the important thing is that the strong form includes um, both the past and the public information. So think of it as a table or think about it as a circle, up to you, but uh, we just have to remember these different levels. I find the best way to tackle this section with regards to the efficient market hypothesis and market anomalies, et cetera, is to do as many practice problems as possible because it really becomes a lot of uh, English language word games, you know? And uh, it's, the concepts are fairly simple, and yet the questions can be uh, uh, fairly difficult, okay? So let's do a practice question here. The best characteristic, uh, sorry, the best characterization of the strong form of efficient market hypothesis with respect to the information set is that it encompasses or surrounds A, both weak form and semi-strong uh, form hypothesis, B, neither weak form nor semi-strong uh, form hypothesis, or C, the semi-strong form but not the weak form hypothesis. Okay, I think this question was actually pretty easy because they're talking about the strong form and it says with respect to the information that it encompasses. So think of encompasses or surrounds or circles and then go back to that graphic and you know that uh, it, it includes both the weak form and the semi-strong uh, form hypothesis and we saw it by the table. We had row one, we had row two, and we had row three and of course the strong form is encompassing all, okay? So the difference among the three forms of the EMH revolves around the information set included in each. The weak form includes public market information. The semi-strong form includes all public information. And uh, the strong form includes all public with private information. So the strong form EMH comp uh, encompasses both the weak form and the semi-strong form. So we'll do another practice question. Which of the following statements most accurately describes the weak form efficient market hypothesis? The weak form EMH assumes that current security prices, A, fully reflect all information from public and private sources, B, fully reflect all security inf market information, including transactions by exchange specialists, or C, adjust rapidly to the release of all public information, that is, security prices fully reflect all public information. Again, this question shouldn't be too bad if you read it carefully and look for some key words, okay? The correct answer is B, 
It says, which of the following statement most accurately describes the weak form efficient market hypothesis? And it's B, the weak form um, market hypothesis is that security prices fully reflect security market information. Don't worry about too much this sentence. You know, this is meant to kind of confuse you here, including transactions by exchange specialists. Well, it's just look for the keyword is market information because it's not from public and private. No way. That's the strong form when you get into the private information. And if you look at C, it says all public information. No, you can see uh, public information is not included in the uh, weak form. The weak form is past market data. So B, so actually for this one, uh, sometimes when you're doing multiple choice questions, you know it's not A and you know it's not C. So it has to be B. You might get a little bit confused by what is this transactions by exchange specialist. But I really know that A and C are, are very wrong because uh, the weak form does not include public information. It's dealing with the past market data. And there I see the word fully uh, reflect all security market information. So that's the key to understanding the weak form. Another practice question. After the public announcement of the merger of two firms, an in uh, investor makes abnormal returns by going long on the target firm and short on the acquiring firm. This most likely violates which form of market efficiency? A, semi-strong form only, B, weak and semi-strong forms, or C, semi-strong and strong forms? Okay, this question's not too bad if you if you read through the uh, solution and then understand what's um, happening here. So as I say, uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So once you read through this and understand it, uh, any type of question similar to this, you'll get it right. So it's saying C is correct. In a semi-strong efficient market, prices adjust quickly and accurately to new information. So this is the case of, an, of a merger being announced and abnormal profits being made based on some public information, okay? So we know that the semi-strong is being violated, okay? Um, nothing to do with the weak form because the weak form is just based on uh, past trading data. So probably going to get uh, uh, B is not right. So then you're, you're, then you're looking at it, is it A or is it C? Is it semi-strong form only or is it semi-strong and strong? And therefore, uh, so let's just continue reading here, so that um, uh, you know investors acting after the merger announcement would not be able to, to earn abnormal returns in a uh, semi-strong because um, you can't, you know, all it's in, the market prices reflect all the public information. So therefore, the market is not uh, semi-strong form efficient. And then a market that is not semi-strong is also not strong. Okay, because going back to the table, we've got our um, uh, past trading data, you know, uh, market data. That's the uh, weak form. And then we have the semi-strong, which is uh, market data plus the public. And then we have our strong form, which is the, is the market data plus the public plus the private. So what that is saying is that if I'm not semi-strong, uh, efficient, then I cannot be strong efficient because I'm violating this one as well. Okay, so then it's got to be C. It can't be only uh, semi-strong. If you're violating semi-strong, you're also violating the strong. Okay, so that's the last paragraph there. Violating the semi-strong form efficiency implies violating the strong form. However, the market could still be weak form efficient as past prices are not being used to make abnormal profits. So thus, we cannot say that the weak form uh, market efficiency has been violated. So a good question. It's a little bit wordy with regards to these uh, weak and semi-strong and strong. They just take a, uh, a fair bit of practice and go back to reading the questions carefully, thinking about the wheels or thinking about the table. But again, um, you know, once you've seen a lot of practice questions on this area, you should be uh, fairly strong. So we'll just finish this LOS with a bit of an easier question that relates uh, a little bit to the previous question and a little bit to the uh, previous LOS as well. So if a securities market is efficient, it's most likely that A, security prices would react only to the unexpected elements of information. B, investors prefer active investment strategies to passive investment strategies. Or C, the time frame for price adjustments allows many traders to earn profits with little risk. Okay, this is looking for the most likely, so we're looking for the true. If a securities market is efficient, 
Uh, investors would prefer active investment strategies? No, we saw that before from a previous chart, that if markets are efficient, investors prefer passive strategies. So they've got the active and passive reverse there. So B is wrong. And the time frame for price adjustments allows many traders to earn profits with little risk? No, that's wrong. If markets are efficient, then uh, they update uh, very quickly. They're informationally efficient, and you don't have the ability to earn profits with little risk. So A was the correct one. Security prices would react only to the unexpected elements of information, okay? In an efficient market, prices should be expected to react only to the unexpected or surprise elements of information releases. Investors process the unexpected information and revise expectations accordingly. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.